Hello everyone, I am Nitij and in today's video, I will show you how to implement feature flags in a React application. This technique allows us to roll out features safely and control who gets access to new functionalities without redeploying our entire application. As developers, we can turn features of our applications on or off without changing our code by using the feature flags. They can be used for A-B testing, canary releases, and controlling access to new or existing features. Normally at an enterprise level, we use third-party services to roll out and implement feature flags. But in this video, I will try to give you guys a basic idea how that can be done by using a Node.js backend by creating a feature flag endpoint which is going to have the parameters for the environment and the project name. Now to show you guys how feature flags can work in a React application by using a backend server, I'm going to create two folders. The first one is going to be the client folder for our React application. The second one is going to be the server folder for our Node.js backend. Now let's just open up the terminal and first create a React application by using the CRA command. So CD client and then npx create react app and then feature flags. Now let's open up another terminal as well and start to implement our node.js backend. So cd server. Now in the server first we have to initialize a new node application that can be done by simply calling npm init with the flag y to say yes to all the questions. Now first I will create a new file in the server folder with the name as server.js. Let's also install a couple of dependencies that we are going to need. So npm install course for cross origin resource sharing settings and express to set up our express server. Now in our server.js file, let's start by importing the required dependencies for express and course and then we can create a new express application by simply calling app equals to express and let's also create a const for our port number which is going to be 3001 and we can simply listen on this port by calling app.listen and then first providing the port number and then providing a callback when the app starts to listen and in this callback we can simply log a message to the console that the server hold on it should be a template string that the server is running on http and hold on http colon and then local host and the port number is our port const value okay next let's use the course middleware so app dot use and course now i will create the endpoint for our feature flags so app dot get and the endpoint is going to be feature flags now i'm going to add the parameters for the environment and also for the project name so that we can get separate feature flag configs depending upon what is the value for the environment and also for the project we have to provide the callback function which is going to accept the arguments for the request and response first let's just destructure the environment and the project values so environment and project they can be fetched from request dot params all right now how do we fetch the values for our feature flags based on environment and the project for that we can create a config file which can be called as feature flags config so I will create a new file and let's name it as feature flags config.js. Now inside this file, we will simply create a config and then we will export it as a module. So let's do that const feature flag feature flags config equals to a new object and then we can simply export it by simply calling module dot exports equals to feature flag config now what is going to be the properties inside this object so what we can do is we can structure this object based on first the environment and then within each environment we can add 
the projects whose features we want to support so suppose that we want to provide the feature flags for two new features it could be a new user interface or it could be another beta feature as well now to implement these first i will add the property for the development environment so development and inside development we can have project a and for project a we can have new ui as enabled but we can have the beta feature as disabled now similarly we can add another project with the name project b and for this project b we can have both new ui and beta feature as disabled now similar to development we can add another environment and we can name that environment as production so production environment is also going to have um, both project a and project b but we can vary the values for the feature flags or feature availability for the new user interface and for the beta feature now let's import this feature flag config in our server.js file we can do that by simply calling const feature flags config equals to require and then we have to give the path which is hold on dot slash feature flags config now we can start to use it over here in our feature flags endpoint implementation so const flags equals to feature flags config and first we can check if the environment is available then we can check if the project is available as well so feature flags config env and feature flags config um, env and project now if both of these are available then what we can do is we can simply return this config as a json value so response.json and then flags otherwise we can return the status 404 which will simply mean that the feature flags are not found so response dot status the code is 404 and let's also send a message which will say not found all right so this is all about our backend node.js server and let's see if our react app has been initialized or not so let me just open up the terminal first and it seems that the um, react application is now initialized so i will just cd into our new react application folder which is feature flags on the server side let's just start our server as well so node server so our server is running on port 3001 all right now when that is out of the way now let's move on to our react application i am going to make the changes directly in the app component so let's first remove this stuff that we are not going to need to call the feature flags endpoint i am going to use the axios library so first we need to install it so npm install and then axios all right so first let's import um, axios so import hold on import axios from axios all right now inside our app first let's create a state variable for all the features so const features set features equals to use state and then let's initialize it with an empty object literal now to fetch the values for the environment and the project we can create a dot env file in our react project so that can be done by simply creating a dot env file in this feature flags folder so new file and then dot env the first one is going to be for our environment so react underscore app underscore env equals to development and the second one is going to be for our project name so react underscore app underscore project equals to let's first set the value as project a all right now let's get back to our app.js file and we can use use effect to set the features state value so use effect and we have to provide the um, effect callback function and this is going to run only when the component is going to mount for the first time so axios dot get and then we have to provide the endpoint url which is http http and then localhost 
the port number is 3001 for our node.js backend and the endpoint name is feature hold on feature flags and now we have to provide the value for the environment which is process dot env dot um, hold on let me just copy from over here react app underscore env and we will have to provide the project name as well so let's do that let me just wrap these things to a new line so process hold on all right process dot env dot and react app project all right now let's change the then callback so dot then and we will get the response so when we will get the response then we will simply set the value of our features state value so set features and we can provide the response dot data as the value let me just format this document first now you must be thinking where are we going to use this features state value so for this code example we are just going to display which feature is available and which is not for any specific environment and project name that we are using in our environment variables so for that i'm just going to render the value if the new ui is enabled or not or if the beta feature is enabled or not by simply checking if new ui is true or false or if beta feature is true or false let's just format this code again now we still need to import the dependencies for the use effect and use state so um, let's do that import react comma use effect and use state from react all right now let's run our react application locally and see if our feature flags are getting fetched correctly or not so that can be done by simply executing the command npm and then start so it says that new ui is enabled but beta feature is not available so let's just check what is the value of the feature flags that we are using in our node.js backend so we are using the development environment and the project is project a so new ui is true and beta feature is false so new ui is enabled which is correct and beta feature is not available which is also correct now let's use another variation we will use the production environment but we will use the um, value for project a again so to do that we have to change the environment value in the env file in our react application from development to production and let's just save it but i think i will have to restart um, the locally running react application so let's restart our app as well this time it says using a standard ui and beta feature is enabled so previously it was saying new ui is enabled and beta feature is not available so you can see that based on the values for the environment and for the project name we are getting different feature flags config from our feature flag endpoint now this is just kind of a mock feature flag service that we have built in a node.js backend third-party services also provide a similar kind of service where we can configure feature flags for specific environments and projects along with some other properties as well such as active duration rollout percentage and user segment for which the feature flags are going to be available and guys that's everything about building a simple feature flag system using react and node.js backend i hope this tutorial helps you in understanding how feature flags can make your deployment process safer and more flexible finally if you found this video helpful then please consider subscribing to stay updated with more coding tutorials and tips your support means a lot and helps me keep producing more content Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.